so good evening everyone like i think uh, without any delay we'll uh, make dr sudan raj sir to start uh, thank you so much sir for the for coming today and accepting the invitation from this uh, manuscript pedia uh, today he'll be uh, taking a talk on a literature review uh, i think we will have like nearly 30 minutes of a talk and we'll have some q and a he is a professor working in uh, etovas lovand university in hungary in a mechanical engineering department so i like to you can uh, go ahead sir Susan Rath, sir. Okay, sir. Yeah, okay. A very good evening to everyone. And I would like to present a lecture on a literature review. And I'm so sorry, guys, I've covered the fluctuations here. So the main contents of the presentation is um, Uh, it, that it starts with introduction and uh, what are the sources for the literature survey and uh, what are the importance of literature survey what is the process involved in the literature review and what is the structure of the literature review and uh, how to write a review article and i have some case studies uh, which can clearly explain about uh, what what kind of uh, literature survey involved in uh, our research article Or writing a research paper and or in a thesis so and uh, this is the definition of a literature review and it is uh, it is in just a process of reading an article and uh, analyzing it and evaluating it and then totally summarizing all the articles in a, of the scholarly materials uh, and about a specific topic so if we were interested in uh, any specific topic you can collect literatures you can analyze the literatures as per your desired uh, area and then you can uh, you can evaluate uh, these uh, literatures and then the process of summarizing the overall uh, literature is called literature review and what are the uses of this literature review is that from the results of the literature review it may be compiled as a report and it can be used as a research article or in a thesis or in a grant proposal so before we proceed with the literature review and we have to ask ourselves few questions for what kind of literature review uh, we have we are going to have so what is the specific uh, thesis problem or research question on which the literature the review helps to defend so what kind of uh, research question you have what kind of problem you have so the literature review uh, uh, we, we have to select a literature based on the problems or the research questions we have so what is the scope of my literature review so what would be the scope of the literature review is that uh, mm, you know so for example in some medical field Uh, in, in, for example, I'm telling that in medical field, the scope of the literature is that everybody is following. Mm. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, what is the scope of my literature? Is that whether the scope of your literature is um, that uh, you know if there is some existing material in some uh, medical field and you have to develop a new material for some specific application, like that. There is a scope for some of the literatures. So whether you are going to make it a you know going to have a problem defined based on the literature or going to start your PhD is based on the literature review. So this is the scope of your literature review. So uh, so before uh, you know after collecting some information uh, literatures we need to go to how good was my information seeking. So what kind of literatures you are collecting? How many search have been wide enough to ensure? And we have collected all the relevant materials, and we have to. We have first initial step is that we have collected. We have to collect enormous number of materials, you know, based on the scope and based on the specific problem, and then we have to narrow down the uh, literatures, and we have to exclude that irrelevant materials. So we will see how we are going to exclude the irrelevant materials. So, then next question is that we have to ask: Have I 
critically analyze the literatures I have used. So you have collected the literatures. Now you have to critically analyze the literatures. Do I follow through your set of concepts? So what kind of concepts? You have some particular concepts. Some someone will follow on with, you know, um, that is methodologies. Someone will follow on the materials or some other perspectives. So there are certain set of concepts, and also there are some arguments over there, and then there are some. Instead of just listing and summarizing the items, you have we have to assess them and we have to discuss the strengths and what the weakness they in the literatures they have some you know um, future scope of work and they have some there are some failures and there there are some achievements we have to discuss the strengths and weakness and and finally this is the most important thing in the literature is that once you uh, frame a literature review or article. And will the reader find my literature review relevant, appropriate, and useful? It should be useful to the readers. So we have to uh, frame a literature review. It should be helpful for uh, a number of uh, readers. So, Hello, sir. Sir. Yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 I think uh, in certain time uh, the voice is not much audible. I think can okay. you? Uh, yeah. Yes. Yes. I can give the mic. Okay. Yeah. Now it is okay, sir. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. And uh, the sources of literature review is that uh, what kind of source, sources we are using to collect the literatures? What kind of uh, literatures? You know, we, we used to collect from books, from journal articles, conference papers, and then thesis, and then some electronic database like online, you know, online things, and then some encyclopedias. We have lot. Uh, so these are the some of the literatures which we can collect and we can proceed for the literature review. So what is the importance of a literature review? Yes. A literature review may be an uh, and in itself to publish it as a review. So we are uh, a literature review, we can collect, as I said, we can collect a number of literatures and we can make it as a review, review, review paper. So it can be a preparative work for taking up for uh, motivating future research. For example, if we uh, if there is an, uh, no idea about what kind of research we are going to take, and you have only the broad field, so you can select uh, the literatures based on your field, and then you can go you know extensive research on the literature review, and then you can start to find a research gap, and then uh, there are a lot of uh, you know literature will show us. Uh, um, their future scope of work and it will motivate us to, to do, uh, you know, uh, take up uh, that as a research work. So it can be to choose and formulate a research problem. So one, this is the initial step of, uh, you know, um, a research. So the literature review will make us to formulate a research problem and. Um, Based on the literature review, we can choose uh, how to choose and how to formulate a research problem. We will see in our upcoming slides. Okay. So, literature survey enables a researcher to become an expert. So, once uh, we do an enormous number of literatures, we once we read a number of literatures on a particular field, we have confidence that uh, we can take up this research. We have we can we have some ideas that we can able to um, you know develop a, a model or develop uh, you know a solution for a problem, and it makes us as an expert or a specialist and an authority in a specific area. The expertise is directly proportional to the efforts taken in the literature review. So the level of expertise is mainly whenever we learn, uh, you know, new things from the literatures, and, um, and we we have a you know, lot of problems uh, from the literatures. So we have, you know, a number of solutions in our mind. So we can work on that. So it it is directly proportional to the uh, number of literature review. So. What are the process of uh, literature uh, review? That so first thing is that determine the clear purpose of the review. So we need to determine the clear purpose of the why do we need to do a review? I mean, what kind of uh, review? Uh, on which field we are going to take a review? Okay. For example, if someone is working in an automobile sector, uh, particularly there of the n number of components and n number of business in automobile, so we need to narrow down focus on a particular uh, area, and we need to collect some literatures based on that uh, particular area of research. So we need to be clear about the 
purpose of review. Second thing is that search, access, and gather the literature. So this will take a number, and I know um, nearly this is the base. So we need to collect a more number of literature. As I said, there are the sources of literature from journals and then books. So we need to first collect that information, so literature. So after collecting that, then we can able to read it, skim it, then we can able to take notes, then we can able to frame up uh, our literature review. So the next step is that skim through the literature. Skim is nothing but fast reading and take some important notes. So we, uh, whatever the literatures we have collected uh, for the review, and uh, we have to read it first. Most probably it is a journal article. If it is a journal article, read the abstract and the main conclusions, and you will get an idea about what kind of work You know, in a short notes, and then and then we can go for a detailed reading of the paper. Because if, if we are collecting around 150 to 100 papers, we cannot be able to spend the you know full time on reading a full article. So the skim to the article will, will like uh, as I said, the abstract and closing question is uh, you know it's enough to get an idea about uh, what kind of work is that literature is this literature is uh, you know uh, related to our uh, search. So we need to. And skip to the literature. Next, notice the similarities and differences in terms of methodologies, philosophies, time, and choice, and interpretation of evidences, reliability. It, it means that so whenever you are going to read uh, around you know five to ten articles, yeah, you know a single author he, he has published a base work in around uh, five years before, and the next year he has done. Um, and an extensive research on uh, you know update in his um, future scope of work in uh, in upcoming years. So you can uh, see the similarities of the research of the single authors for the past five to ten years, and also you can see the same kind of research uh, done by uh, you know various authors. You can able to compare what kind of methodology they have followed, what kind of uh, uh, you know results they have published, what kind of results they Others, other authors have uh, you know, published. So their differences and their similarities, we can note it down, we can be able to uh, you know, analyze. So once we start to read the literature, once we you know, gather the literatures, then we will be able to find out these similarities and differences in methods. So after reading a uh, you know, number of literatures, we will find some research gaps. So we will see uh, you know this kind of research can be taken this is the challenging task this is uh, this kind of research research is in the peak everybody is trying to find out a solution for this okay so you can find out some uh, research gap you know in the areas that is required for the future study from the literature survey so not any particular issue or problem that stands out because you know each and every problem every article will have a future scope of work there may be an, a negative uh, result so we cannot be able to go with everything so we need to focus on particular thing or particular issue which we can able to take up and which we can able to take work out on that because we need uh, you know enormous number of time and facilities to take up the research so before we go into uh, you know this uh, identifying this problem or particular issue we need to think about the facilities the time and the you know the, the funds involved in carrying out the research so all these things we need to focus on before taking up the problem then Build a database of notes. So once you read a literature, we cannot be able to keep up everything in our mind. So we need to take uh, build up the notes and integrate the references, text, quotes, and the comments. And we can able to we can able to make it a table or chart so that it would be easy for us to whenever we try to recall something or whenever we try to uh, write a review on a review paper, we can able to go back and we can able to. Uh, you know, see things that we have learned earlier. We can. It is easy for us to understand. Easy for us to recall. So, uh, we need to create the notes, and we can, uh, you know, build a database. Uh, I think that this mainly software reference software has an inbuilt, uh, you know, uh, notes and highlighting, uh, you know, features. So we can able to uh, take some notes on the while reading the literature. So we can highlight that. 
or else we can use I have, I have some layout we can see that layout we can manually uh, take notes on that kind of layout layout then this is, this is very important because once you take the notes we cannot it is easy for us that we we can avoid going back and forth and uh, you know change the direction and focus of the review so once you you read two two to three literatures we will forget what we have read in the first literature so in order to avoid that we need to take notes okay so so this is a notes format and layout here you can see that categories and classifications it is for your for our own understanding you can categorize it as per you know uh, materials process or uh, their uh, formulations everything and then you can give us uh, headings and subheadings and then where the source like uh, which journal and um, uh, from which location you have stored it so then this is the notes which we have read, read out in the literature. You can take it as a notes. For example, if you have if you understood something uh, like, um, you know, a process, they are in their new process, you can write out data uh, and done research on this new process. And your own thoughts, you can write your own thoughts here that uh, we can make some changes in the process and uh, we can work on that. So each and every each and every literature you can group it, name it, and you can uh, note it down from the literature and you give your own thoughts and comments. So this will avoid in my previous example, this will avoid going back and forth and change the direction and the focus of the review or the research program. So this is very important. So this is one way of taking notes. And another is that you can use an Excel. Simple thing is you can use an Excel. Uh, you can number it and then you can filter it using the uh, Excel filters. So year wise you can and then uh, author wise then process wise. You can group it, group it and categorize it and classify it according to your uh, your uh, you know needs. And then uh, this is the structure of a literature review. So here I'm. Um, so once the you know this is a scope and structure. So this is, you have collected a volume of literatures here. So you have to cat, you know, categorize into two, two categories of the literatures. One literature is that it is distantly related to your research work. It is not much related to your research work. And here, these articles here, it is you know, near 70 to 80% related to your research question. Okay. And then, uh, it is not here. This uh, literature, you have, you know, you have to filter it again, and you have narrow, you have to narrow it down, so that it is uh, This kind of you can literatures are not so close or are not matched directly to your research question. And here, these categories you may deal with sources in detail. Here, which will give you more detail about your research. So, so this, this is a volume of literature collected. You have grouped it into two. We, this is directly attending your uh, research question. This you can skip it out. Uh, you know, not not skip it. This is the distant related to your work. Then from that you can write down, and then you can see some of the literatures which can match it to you and which which is not matched directly. And here you know this categories is that which will give more information and more details. And then further you can narrow it down and you can find out that uh, you, these categories close to your research and you may find that you are looking for the key papers and details because if you are collecting around the 500 to 300 to 400 papers and you can narrow it down to around 30 to 40 papers and then finally five five to six research papers so you have to group it and you have to, you have to filter it because we cannot be able to focus on our research with the you know, in number of papers. So uh, we need to have a base paper so to work out on our research objective. So at least even you need a five papers, which is very closely related to the research problem. So uh, this is a writing the review. So this is the introduction section and this is the conclusion. In between there is a to content this content each and every topic process materials parameters and then results and discussions of each and every you know journals you have studied so we have to interlink with each other uh, like for example if somebody is working on uh, you know 
some aluminium materials in this topic one and they have um, and they have developed some properties they have tested on some properties for that aluminium matrix and here in, in the recent era they have developed the, the same kind of properties with uh, another composite natural composite or something else so we have to correlate that and so each and every topic we need to correlate with each other so this is the content should be the content of the literature review and then the introduction section should uh, you know uh, give us the detail about the, the research we have and uh, you know what, what is the need for this literature review and all those things and the conclusion should uh, summarize everything and uh, it should lead to our work and what kind of research we are going to take take up and what is the research gap so everything should be in the conclusion so this is the flow of the literature review uh, sorry this uh, review article so what are the literatures we have read you know we have to group and discuss your sources in order to publish the highlighting the publication highlighting the changes in the research in the field and uh, your specific topic over and time over time and some examples of key development through the time so from okay, if it is for a decade or a, you know two decades starting from the first paper on the work and for examples of the key development over the time and the current case in presently what they are developing on that um, particular field and then you are, we have to direct our research and where we are going to uh, take our research so this is should be in our literature review article and then uh, as i said there are three sections in a literature review one is that first section is the introduction it will give the scope of the review how is the review is organized and then the significant gap in the research in your article and then the body of this uh, literature review should have this because once we have done an extensive uh, literature survey finally we have to compare compare the as i said all the topics should be interrelated we have to compare and then uh, compare the theories and then concept and then indicating your own position where we are and the, from the you know uh, literature so so far they have done so this extensive research in this field and how own research on this so we have to uh, use a strategic and selective referencing to support your arguments so we need to select your uh, select some of the references we need to justify our uh, you know uh, problem that we can able to take it and we, we can able to we, we thought because we cannot able to say all the literature which we have published is useful to us because some may we may, we may feel that it can be uh, reworked and we can able to you know feel that it can be uh, taken to some other levels of research so we can able to uh, make some arguments and we can work on that also then finally we can conclude with a statement that summarizes your review and uh, link your own research you know you know current issues so conclude with a statement that, you know that summarizes your review and then i have some case studies of research articles so this is an research article this is one of my research article you see this introduction section this introduction section we will have what is the general introduction about uh, this uh, you know paper what we are working because we are working on uh, we have worked on some automobile friction material that is brakes so we gave some introduction about what is brakes um, brake friction material what is the materials involved in that uh, brake friction material and then uh, we have then an extensive literature survey uh, in previously how many of them were worked on this friction uh, materials so far and then what is that um, you know and this is this is to technical so some technical aspects how they have you know worked in this previous uh, so years so we have developed a you know research gap there is a problem so we have developed a problem here so these kind of uh, you know uh, high temperature resistant material is lacking 
so I, in applying uh, in, in uh, the formulation of high pressure material so extensive researches are going on high temperature material so we have developed and um, you know we have uh, in, incorporated a new material into a friction uh, uh, material that is calcium sulfate ester so we have developed a new formulation based on the literature review so once we done a literature review we have uh, come to a conclusion that uh, uh, there is a gap that the temperature is a major problem temperature the friction material cannot able to withstand at high temperatures so we need a thermal stable material so we need to find an alternative thermal stable material which is presently uh, which can replace the presently available material so we have done an extensive research and we have find out a new material and we have incorporated a new material so for that we need to do a literature survey this is for um, research article once we write a research article, we will learn in the introduction section, we will write about this extensive uh, literature survey, the research gap, and our problem is defined, and then the solution. So, so this uh, review article is that here you can see this is a recent review article i can show you how this is presented you see so yeah you see they have uh, here it is done that from uh, nearly 1970s they have found out that uh, uh, this is a base paper that is a starting paper of this work this is related to some solid lubricants so this is the method they have used and them and um, you know less microscopes and then and these are the observations what are the what is the author's interpretations and their comments so you see each and every articles they have you know they have developed this uh, you know they have interpreted author interpretations their comments and what is the method they have used then uh, their observations so you, this is kind of a note taking this is easy for the reader to read because we cannot be able to uh, take we don't have enough time to read each and every article so we can see this 55 article reference uh, 2004 he has worked on this uh, you know um, this materials and they have followed these methods and uh, this is the author in, uh, inference and this can be done so these are easy for us the readers because one literature review paper it will cover uh, around 100 references so it is easy for a um, reader to read a single paper which is equal to reading a 100 paper so here you see um, this research used nearly one or two references so this is an example of a review paper it will have an introduction section then conclusion and this kind of uh, you know inferences And then finally, in thesis also, we have this literature review. Yes. So this is the literature survey. And we start with an introduction on what, uh, our, uh, what kind of, uh, um, uh, you know, general objective about uh, our research and then how many articles are reviewed and what, how it is categorized. So we have categorized the literatures into different categories, you know, what kind of fiber materials we have categorized, filler materials and then organic fibers, natural fibers. But in, in, in my case of, uh, you know, uh, research I am talking about. So we have categorized or grouped the materials and then we have grouped the literature based on the materials. And then finally, on, um, after this, you know, uh, literature, after uh, this literature, we have these inferences. You know, after this extensive literature survey, we have, for, you know, uh, you know, these inferences from the literature survey and the research gap. 
So once we do this extensive research, we can able to find out this research gap. After finding out the research gap, we can able to develop the objective. So based on the literature we have survived, we have found out the research gap and then we have framed these objectives. So after these objectives, we have framed the research methodology. So, so this is the basic of the research. So once we are going to start up a research activity, we need to first focus on this literature surveys. So I think uh, I have covered the you know, basics about literature survey, how it will be effective, what is the process involved, and then um, what is the importance of literature survey, and then, uh, and then in the case of uh, research article, how it will be helpful, in a review article, how it, 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 will, it will be helpful, and in a thesis, how it will, it is, help in developing a research gap and then framing an objective. So I think I, I can conclude with this. And I would like to thank everyone for this opportunity and then I invite uh, the questions so that I can help you to clarify whichever I need. Thank you. Thank, thank you so much, sir. In the chat box, uh, there are a few yes. questions. Uh, the chat box, the Zoom. The Zoom, there is a chat option is there. So I will read it like how to stop overlapping of information. Yeah, this overlapping of information, what you're talking about. I think that, in uh, li li literature review when we are collecting, uh, I guess. Yes, yes. Whenever you are trying to collect, uh, you know, literature, there will be a lot of information, which as I said, a single author have published extensively on two to three or four uh, you know works similar kind of works so uh, you can you know uh, it is related to your topic so if you are uh, working on a particular topic if it is um, you collect the uh, you know uh, recently published work which will tell you clearly about uh, you know what is the present situation what is the current trend so that uh, you can take it take your research from that i think so uh, next uh, question is like how how much minimum literature review for uh, for our thesis for thesis how many uh, literature review article for, uh, for my thesis I have extensively covered around 150 literatures because once you are going to because uh, once you are going to do a literature review uh, you are going to your second chapter of your thesis is going to be literature review obviously so you you can write a review paper once you are going to write a review paper with at least minimum of 100 minimum of 100 papers is needed as uh, i hope so the question is like uh, what type of case studies can be added in review article it, uh, case studies it depends upon uh, your uh, objective that is uh, your research area I, uh, what kind of case studies i couldn't get uh, the question because uh, it, it depends upon the you know uh, research the individual research because it, the, once you are going to start uh, writing a review paper you can first collect uh, a few review papers to, on that particular uh, you know uh, research area because uh, there may be a, uh, at least two, two to three review papers already available in that area. You can collect that and you can see their uh, references and uh, it will help you to collect uh, those kind of references. Uh, and then if, for example, if someone has published a review paper on your research area uh, three years before, so you, 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 you can collect uh, their references, at least they have 50 to 60 references from the you know past decades 10, 10 years so for the recent three years you can collect it you can focus on that and then it will help you to you know uh, find the recent trends uh, uh, you can write a re review article on the recent trends of that area yeah another question is like uh, can you send your review paper to us <laughs> yes definitely i will send my review paper you just mail me sir i will forward uh, there is a whatsapp yes, group yes, for definitely. all the participants yeah. i will share to them yes, yes definitely. any more queries
thing then if no more queries then we will uh, wind up this session thank you so much sir thank you yeah, thank you, uh, thank for you. accepting the invitation and uh, it was a very informative session here yeah thank you so much thank you thank, thank you, you sir thank you thank you sir